Welcome to Right on Track, a songwriting podcast. Thanks to Tone for tuning in. I'm Demi Michelle Schwartz, and I'm thrilled you're joining me on my songwriting journey. So kick back and relax, don't fall flat, and remember, stay right on track. Hello everyone, welcome back to Right on Track. I am so excited because joining me today is Chelsea Gilliland. Hey Chelsea. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for having me. Of course, it's going great. How are you doing? Not too bad. It's a it's a nice, beautiful morning in Nashville. I am so jealous. I am actually going to be going back to Nashville in October, so I can't wait to be back in Music City. Where are you located? Pittsburgh. Oh, cool. Super cool. Yeah. So I'm up here, um, but I'm so excited you're joining me today because we have lots to chat about. But before we get into specifics, can you share the listeners a little about yourself and how you got started in music? Yeah, um, I got started in music when I was young. I was pl- I started playing classical piano when I was like five, and then I was always really drawn to like rock music. My dad would listen to Nirvana and the Smashing Pumpkins when I was growing up. And so I listened to that a lot. And then when I was in middle school, I joined a rock band and we kind of just played music together all throughout high school. And I loved it. And then when I got to um, college, I met Sawyer, who is our drummer, and Sean, and and then we became a band. Sawyer and I have been playing music together since we were freshmen in college and I was like making pop music back then and it it never really what felt like it was my thing and then we um we started playing some shows in Brownwood, Texas and um while we were playing there most of our our music just kind of slowly became more rock sounding and then um we we asked one of or actually our guitar player quit so we found a new guitar player and he kind of got the the band started really it was the three of us i moved in with sawyer's friend sean and i didn't really know sean before i moved in with him and he became our bass player and then um our guitar player actually quit. So it was like a a lot of like swapping around of people, but now it's the three of us, me, Sean and Sawyer. And, um, it's, it's been, it's been like a long time, like building into this band, but it's cool to finally be here. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. So I know you went to Belmont university and have a background in songwriting and also a little on the music business side as well. So being an artist yourself, how are you finding that your education is helping? Because there are so many songwriters and artists who don't have a formal education. So how does that play into your own experiences? Yeah, I, you know, before I went to Belmont, I was like, there's no way you can teach someone how to write a song. There's just, there's no way. Because to me, songwriting's always been something that like has been more of like a spiritual thing. It's like, you're kind of like channeling something. Um, and it, you kind of like get into that flow state and it feels so just like out of this world to like, I don't know, just be in the flow state. So I was, I had my doubts about it before I joined the program. Um, but pretty quickly I realized that you, you really can teach someone how to write a song. Um, it's just kind of like developing a muscle, you know, it's like learning how to play an instrument. Um, but it's like the muscle is your mind. So you have to feed it literature and, you have to read, listen to other artists. Um, I, I like reading poetry a lot. And, um, you know, it, it is just like a muscle that you develop just like any any other instrument. That's awesome. I completely agree. I've also done a handful of songwriting retreats and courses online. I actually have a classical music background. I went to school for music and my concentration was in piano and so I'm classically no trained yeah that's my main instrument I know when you were talking about the beginning starting with classical piano I was like me too <laughs> that's so cool I, yeah. how do you think that it's impacted your songwriting so the coolest thing for me is like I think the theory side really helps for sure mm-hmm. I think like the songwriting itself um, I actually have a master's degree in English so it's kind of putting the writing and the music together and so I think for me with the classical education it makes me think about music in a very different way and I think through having that background when I'm 
write in, I know other chords that I can pull in that work, like secondary dominance and all those things. But I've also sh like found it as a little bit of a struggle too because classical music has a lot of very strict rules. And as you know, songwriting has tools and things, but there's not one right or wrong thing. And so I kind of had to break out of the classical mindset a little bit, but definitely having that classical background and having an English background as well definitely helps so much. Yeah, I, th I feel like I would agree with you on that too. I think sometimes theory is so beneficial for writing at chords for your songs and stuff and even even melodies. Um, but then sometimes I feel like it gets in the way and like if you become too technical, then you don't allow yourself to go into the flow state. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So when you also studied the business side... I'm sure you learn a whole lot about the music industry. Has that helped you as well? Yeah, I think um, my music business classes were great. Um, they were definitely my harder classes. Um, but, I, you know, I really feel like I got the best experience of learning how to navigate the business world by just going into the business world and, like, having that, like, hands-on experience. I think I learned a lot more just being being in it you know I think that's a really great point because the music business is always changing so quickly and so I think yeah it's about actually putting yourself in a position to learn how things work and learn and grow and all of those things I've read books about the music business but it's like hard to kind of apply that in some ways because you don't really know what it's like until you're actually in it and there are definitely things that you need to know um, on the more like specific side like how do royalties work and like all of that technical stuff but in terms of like networking and building a brand like all of that feels so individual um, especially with the brand building like you want to make your own personal brand and put that out there and so I think it's all about like trial and error in many ways see what works see what doesn't because what might work for one artist may not work for you or me or whatever and so yeah I definitely agree with you that I mean I'm sure it was awesome having that education though but um, oh yeah I haven't had any very specific business classes yeah, I feel like you're totally right. It, it definitely taught me about like the the technical aspects of the music business, like songwriting royalties, how to uh, how to sign up to uh, copyright your songs, um, how to sign up with a PRO. It taught me all of those like very technical aspects. But I also think like s starting a band and starting an artist brand is so similar to just like having a startup company mm -hmm. that it's you know my dad worked in startups when I was growing up, so I watched him. I watched him build a lot of brands as a kid. And I think honestly watching my dad do that and build startups really was the most beneficial to me because it, it, it is like you, you have this business that you're starting and you have, um, you have to like pay people, you have to develop a logo, you have to develop a website, a brand, everything. It's all, it's all every, it feels like every business like industry is all very similar. You, you kind of have to like work your way up, you know, like you start playing shows to completely empty rooms and then, you know, a couple of people join, they bring their friends next time. And it's like, it's like any, any sort of like company, it feels like, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. And I think too, like, especially with music, that's such like a unique situation because it's a very subjective industry with like, what people like and what people don't like and people's paths are very different and I feel like as artists and songwriters we're basically the number one people advocating for ourselves and when we bring people on board we're basically hiring people to work for us we're like the bosses of our own brand and our music and it's definitely sometimes hard to find people to trust because of how the industry is but I think once you find that supportive group of people and have the right people around you then it's definitely helpful what do you think one of your biggest lessons you've learned so far has been being in the music industry Ooh, that's a good question I think um you know, I, there's, I'm still learning so much as I go, but, um, I think every person that I've met so far has taught me so much and, and every person that comes into my life really has something new to teach me. So I feel like the biggest lesson is just like being open to allowing new people into my space because every person that's come into my life has taught me something really, really beneficial. 
like I feel like just staying open to learning from everyone around you has been the biggest lesson. I love that so much. I completely agree. The coolest thing is this is an industry where I feel like everybody has a story and everybody has things that they've been through that they've learned from and wisdom to share. And it's really beautiful, I think, when you find the people who are willing to be open about their own journeys and be willing to inspire others and help them out. And I think that's like one of my favorite things about hosting the podcast is getting to talk to so many incredible people who are just like me. Like we're all in the music industry. Some are artists, some are more on the business side, but you were all in the music industry for one specific reason. We all love music and we love what we do. And I think learning from people and being open to seeing things from their point of view is so important because I think we just become more rounded when we do that. We kind of gather all these gems along the way of things that we observed or things that people have taught us. And I think that just makes us so much stronger on our own. Uh, Yeah, I completely agree. And I think um, my day job is similar to yours. I I host a radio show and um, I'm always interviewing new artists. And every time I have someone new on, they teach me something that I didn't know before about the music industry. So it's really cool to be in the business of interviewing people, you know? For sure. So that's a perfect transition because I wanted to ask you about the radio show. So how did that come about? So my boss, Jeff, moved to Nashville a couple of years ago. I don't know how many years ago exactly. Um, And I had just put out a song called Cowboy. Um, And I just like went on like this crazy, like 40 hour. I don't even know what the, the word would be, but I was just submitting that song to every radio station that I could possibly find that would take submissions. And I was emailing it to everyone. Like I spent so long just sitting in my room emailing (laughs) people. And Jeff was like, I I must've sent like thousands of emails, but Jeff was the only person that responded. Oh my gosh. And he was like, yeah, I mean, we haven't started our radio station yet, but like, we love your song. Actually, do you want to meet up for coffee? So I went and met up with Jeff for coffee. And he offered me a record deal, which um, I then we we went back and forth for a really long time. And I ended up turning down the offer. The pandemic happened two weeks after I turned down that offer. And then they were like, well, that's OK. But do you want to work at our radio station and be a radio show host? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys are awesome. And um, it's just blossomed into such a beautiful friendship. And, you know, Jeff feels like he, it, to me, he feels like he's like family here in Nashville. And he's introduced me to such a beautiful network of people. He introduced me to Dave Auday, who produced a bunch of songs for me. And then Dave introduced me to Lee Brannon, who has been working really, really hard on just like helping to like, get, you know, like uh, she got the PR firm that organized this interview she's been she's I call her like my my spiritual guide um she's been just like helping me navigate the industry and it's been super um super super helpful for the music that I'm making um and so yeah it all it all started with uh Jeff and a song called Cowboy that's such a beautiful story that's a great example of how the industry is like if you find the right people your network just expands like one person will introduce you to somebody else and someone else I feel like that's what happened to me over in the UK I have a nice following over there and it was so crazy because I met a girl who runs a blog and she gave me my first review back in 2019 and then she told me about this one station that was doing a Christmas special right when I released my original Christmas song. And I was like, I've never had airplay yet at this point. This was 2020. I was like, it's literally in the middle of a pandemic. I've never had airplay. Like, I don't know. And she's like, no, just submit it. And so I did. And then it got played. And then that radio host introduced me to a bunch of other people. And now, like, I feel like I'm just, like, adopted by the UK at this point. Like, I just need to go over there and meet everybody. But, like, it's so beautiful when you meet those people who are just so passionate about what they do, where it doesn't matter where you are in your career. Like, if they like what you do, they like your personality and your music, they're so willing to help you out any way they can. Totally. And I think it's like, you know, everyone going into the industry is like, be careful of people in the music industry. They're shady. But I feel like the experience that I've had has been 
so different than like I've I've met some of the most genuine people that really care about mm-hmm. the music that I'm making and that really care about me as a person. And like there was a time when I was living out of uh, my car and every single one of them was like, dude, come stay at my house. What are you doing? You're yeah. crazy. And like they, they just, you know, like it, I've had such the opposite experience of that. And I'm so grateful that I've I've met such amazing people. You know, it's I feel really, really fortunate. Absolutely. For sure. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about your upcoming EP, Quantum Entanglement. What was the inspiration behind this project? Yeah, so, um, you know, this project has kind of been in the works since the start of our band. It was initially called Karmic Debt, and it had some other songs that won't be on it. Um, And it started, I I wrote, um, I guess it started just... I would, I just started writing songs about my experience in, in falling in love and being heartbroken and falling in love again. And like, just, you know, I wrote it about that. And then the more I like looked at the lyrics I had written, the more I was like, wow, like this is more about like, like my internal journey to find balance and to find peace within myself. And, you know, like, I think I've learned a lot about just how to balance like the the masculine and feminine energies within myself and that's kind of what this whole EP the whole story is about like I think from an outside view it might look like it's about two people that I that are falling in love and then break up but I think it's more about those two energies inside of me that are like constantly um sort of battling against each other to 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 find that um sort of balance but I think um Quantum entanglement is is a phenomenon in quantum physics, which where uh, I think I believe it's with electrons. Um, where or no no no, it's with yeah yeah it is it is. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I t- I did chemistry and it's like slipping my mind. <laughs> yeah, I recognize the term I, though. Yeah, it's something with I atoms. It's with electrons. <laughs> yeah, it's as with a very small um, particle on the quantum scale. So I do believe it's electrons, um, but you know whatever happens to one directly affects the other ones, regardless of where they are in the world. So like, it's it's really the only instance that scientists have been able to see where information travels faster than the speed of light, which I think is crazy. So then I kind of like was thinking about that whole concept, and I was like, you know, like this is interesting when you relate it to like love and people and like. You know, like you could be on one side of the world, but the what you do can directly impact someone on the other side of the world. Not not only with social media, but like you know, with the, with the music you write or or uh, just the things that you put online. I don't. I mean, I guess at the time I wasn't really thinking of it that way, but now now that I'm saying this, it's uh, I guess it it makes sense that way. Um, but it's more, yeah. It's it's kind of I took that that phenomena and turned it into um more of like a spiritual discovery within yourself of of balancing the masculine and feminine energy that is so cool it's so cool how you started writing these songs from kind of like a personal experience mindset and then afterward you looked at it and you were like oh wait this is what I'm actually saying I think that's the coolest thing about songwriting is in the moment while we're writing and experiencing things I know for me personally it's like I just need to process things and get my thoughts and feelings out and write a song to make sense of things but then I've noticed with especially my EP coming out later this year and the one I'm currently writing now there's deeper meanings that you don't really recognize until you look at the collection of songs and ask yourself, what's the connection? And then when you find that, it's almost like your subconscious making you realize something that you discover through songs. And I think that's the coolest thing. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. And I even like beyond that too, like I feel like there's so many songs that I've written that like I will look back in like a couple years and be like whoa like that actually played out exactly as I wrote it because at the time I'll be writing and I'll be like I have no idea what this there was actually a song that that we released um called it was all in my head um I wrote that song when my band was in Hawaii and I was like honestly I have no idea what this song is about 
But then a year later, everything that I wrote about played out exactly as I wrote it. So now I, now I think that that, I mean, now I look back at that journal that I was writing in and I think it was magic. I got it, I got it at like a tea, tea shop called the Dragon's uh, Den in Maui. And that, that journal is magic because everything I wrote in there ended up playing out the way I wrote it. And I wish I would have known because I wouldn't have written so many sad songs. You know? <laughs> That's so cool. I love it. I love it. So can you give just a little brief overview of each track on the EP? Yeah, so so the first track is called Karmic Debt, and that song is kind of about meeting someone and feeling like you've known them in a past life or, or you know, like feeling like you have this really deep connection with them, but not totally knowing why, because you've never, you've never met them before. Um, and then it's kind of about, you know, how there's a bunch of internal demons you kind of have to like sort out and perhaps that person was just like a karmic lesson in your life to teach you how to balance those things within yourself and then the next song is called if you knew me that that song I wrote when I, when I was living out of my car and it's totally about just like other people's perceptions of of you and um being afraid to be your true self because it hurts less if people hate the version of you that isn't really you than if they really knew you and hated that version of you oh wow okay that hits really personal that's deep I love that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> yeah I think I, I spent so much of my life trying to be what everybody else wanted me to be mm -hmm. because I was so afraid that if they really knew who I was, they would hate me. But now I'm at a place where I'm like, you know, if you don't like who I am, that's then fine. I, I, <laughs> I don't need you in my life, you right. know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, And then the next track, I'm going to pull up my track list because there's so many songs. There's 11 songs actually on this EP. Um. Yeah, the next song is called Ceiling Fan and that this song's about falling in love and just like um the my boyfriend now has this like fan, this ceiling fan in his house and he's like he always needs to have the fan on and I really really hate fans. I don't know why. <laughs> my whole band bullies me about it, but like cuz I really I don't know why this is, but like when air blows on my forehead, that's like <laughs> nails on a chalkboard to me. That's the worst feeling in the whole world. And so, you know, whenever we're on tour or on the road, my band is always like, Chelsea, you're so weird. Because like, I'll, I'll ask them to move the vents away from me because I hate air blowing on me. That's so um, funny. So I, the song is kind of like me joking about just like how I hate that ceiling fan, but also I... I, I'm falling in love. That's perfect. And uh, Vancouver is the next track, which we put out as a single. And that was the first song we wrote as a band. And that that is the most, that song was really hard for me to write. I was dealing with a lot of just family, family stuff at the time. And it's just about like the lengths that I would go to at, when I was a teenager just to get my parents' attention because I just felt so alone and I never felt like, I felt like no one was really there for me growing up. And so like that, that song is like really just about, you know, the, the lyric is, um, well, it's basically saying, would you, would you call me if I crashed your car? Um, because like there's, I've gone to every length possible to get your attention, but but I can't. But now, you know, my family's doing really well. And like, we've all been doing a lot of internal healing. And I think we're in such a great place. And it's really beautiful to see. And it's inspiring to see all of the like self work that my parents have done and that, that me and my siblings have done. And we're in a really good place now. But I wrote that when we weren't. And Monotony is actually a live song that we recorded in Hawaii when we were there, there writing music, um, we recorded it in a barn. It's from a poem I wrote just about generational curses and generational trauma um, and how, how it impacts you, kind of like the whole epigenetics thing. Um, and then Garden 
is the next track on the album and that we released that as a single too. Sean wrote every guitar on that song and bass part. And like when he wrote it, I was like, that's going to be a great song. And it's my favorite song that we've put out. I was sitting on the roof of my house and I was thinking to myself, you know, like if the world were to end right now with this person that I think that I love so much, would they want to be with me? And and then I, you know, I kind of realized at the end of the poem that, that they wouldn't. And that was hard. That was really hard for me to come to terms with. But I, I don't think I really realized that until after I had written the poem like months later. And then Lily of the Valley is more of an acoustic track. There's no drums on it. And this was a song that I wrote about my confusion of why I'm so drawn to relationships where my partner is doing the bare minimum and borderline like abusive relationships. I was really drawn to those for a while. And I think, you know, I had to do a lot of internal healing to, to realize that, you know, it just comes from childhood stuff. And once I healed that, like, I feel like, I don't know, I'm still trying to heal from that, but I think um, I'm definitely not drawn towards those kinds of relationships anymore, which is good. But I wrote that song about my confusion as to why I was, And then Cloud is the next song that was probably the hardest song I've ever written in my life that I started writing that with somebody that I was falling in love with. And I I was so confused because as I was writing and I was like, this song feels like it's such a sad song, but I was trying to write it about like love and being in love and being happy. And I wasn't able to finish it until that person left my life. And then I realized that it's actually not a love song it's about feeling like you have to change yourself to be what uh someone else wants you to be and that actually you're at that point you're just better off being by yourself and then 555 is the single i wrote that i wrote that the morning i broke up with my boyfriend <laughs> I'm, who i'm still i got back together with him but we broke up because i had a lot of internal healing to do um and that yeah so I wrote that about how I wish that I could just like be a good girlfriend to him but I I had I just wasn't ready yet um but yeah we're really good now no hard feelings is like a very direct to the point song that song is very um the words are very direct it it honestly If I could go back, I would have made them a little less direct because it definitely ended some friendships for me. (laughs) But honestly, I still think it's a it's a jam and it's just about like, you know, a heartbreak and being worried about seeing that person in public. Um, And then the last song on the album is called Hypothetically, which is about it's also really direct. It's just kind of about like wanting to be with someone but still thinking of that other of a different person and um when you're with them which sucks uh but yeah that's that's the whole album sorry that was a long long yeah that was awesome I love sharing all of the stories and inspiration behind each as a whole what do you hope listeners take away from this project um you know I just hope that It can help some people feel seen or I don't know. I hope that it can be relatable to one person. Then then I feel like I will have done my job as a songwriter. (laughs) For sure. That's the goal, right? To connect with people. Yeah, absolutely. So, Chelsea, it was lovely having you. Before we go, what's some advice that you would give to any songwriters or artists listening who may be hesitant to take the leap and start their careers? You know, I think the best advice that I've received is that like songwriting is just like, like I said earlier, it's like developing a muscle and like music is so subjective that if one person doesn't like your music, who cares? Don't write music for other people, write it for yourself. And, you know, you'll just keep growing as an artist, no matter what, you can only go up, um, so, you know, don't let don't let the haters bring you down and uh, keep doing your thing and be yourself and write music for you. Never write music for anyone else. 
Fabulous. That was absolutely perfect. It was awesome having you. Can you share with everyone where they can find you on social and listen to your music? Totally. Yeah, my uh, social is at King Chelsea, which is King C-H-L-S-Y, no vowels. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's King Chelsea on TikTok and Instagram. And then Spotify, it's just Chelsea, which is C-H-L-S-Y. Fabulous, Chelsea. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I really enjoyed having you on. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode with Chelsea Gilliland. And of course, until next time. Stay stay right right on track. track.